Good morning. I'm Margie Shapps. I'm the direct, Executive Director at Health and Medicine Policy Research Group. Thank you very much for coming to our first of 2016 um, in our series of the Chicago Forum for, health, for Justice in Health. So Health and Medicine has been conducting this series of forums for the last couple of years. Thank you very much to the Chicago Community Trust for supporting us in doing this. And we try to do these every month or two and sometimes every three months where we talk about really important health reform issues facing the state of Illinois and invite in speakers sometimes from outside the state as you'll see today and many from inside the state to grapple with really hard issues that we're all trying to deal with. Um, so uh, we really expect your participation today. You can see at the front of your packet, we try to do pretty small packets, you've got people's slides. You've also got half sheets that, that ask you to write down important salient points that you hear during the day that really resonate with you and you want us to make sure to, to bring up in our conclusions. And we also there's also space for you to write down questions. So as you fill those out, as you hear from speakers and you wanna make, um, make sure that you write down some of these points, just hold them up and we'll have staff coming around and collecting them. And we'll be keeping track of them throughout the day and giving them to Mike Gelder who will be the, the MC and the moderator for the day. So, and if you need more, raise your hand, we'll, we'll get you more of these pieces. Um, so again, thank you to the Chicago Community Trust and thank you to the Loyola Health Justice Project that um, time after time gives us wonderful space to hold these meetings in. There's a little bit of an echo, right? You guys hearing that? It's okay, all right, great. Um, and uh, a final thank you, but not uh, least important is to Wesley Eplin, our Director of Equity at Health and Medicine, who put this, okay. who is responsible for all the great forums that we put on in Health and Medicine, from, from soup to nuts, finding speakers, thinking through that what are the most important issues and who would be the best people to, to help us lead us through the discussion. So thank you, Wesley, what an important role this is. So I'm really looking forward to th this discussion today. For how many of you have never been to a health and medicine forum before? Oh wow, welcome. So now you'll be on our email list. You'll hear from us endlessly, and, and hopefully you'll come to hopefully you'll come to more of these. So we've been talking for a long time about having a forum on the Illinois budget, and not just on the crisis of the day, which is certainly a, a major crisis of the day, and we will talk about that, but but more long term, how do we try to get out of having a crisis every year? And how, how do we try to think about the budget in a different way to make us a, to have a sustainable budget that takes care of the needs of the people of this state and is fiscally responsible? So that's what Mike Gelder will be uh, walking us through. So let me introduce Mike Gelder, our moderator for the day who has a, quite a job to handle today. So Michael is, most of you probably know him, but he is the former senior health policy advisor to Governor Quinn for I think six years or so. And he was the director of GOHIT, the Governor's Office of Health Innovation and Transformation for the last several years of the Quinn administration. He's also a board member of Health and Medicine Policy Research Group, a founding board member in 1981. And let's turn it over. Past president, of course. So, Mike. <laughs> uh, good morning. Thank you. Thank good you, Margie. Um, well, it's great. Uh, I did raise uh, my hand. I think it was. I was reminiscing uh, uh, last night as I was uh, thinking about preparing for today that uh, uh, several of us from uh, the uh, Quinn administration spoke at a. Uh, uh, we were the uh, outgoing uh, uh, dignitaries, I guess, at the time a year ago. I guess it was. It was uh, December of last year. And uh, we had a great uh, forum there about the future of health care and Medicaid in Illinois. Uh, and I'm, uh, it was 360, what, eight days ago that uh, uh, we were fired. And uh, it's, uh, it's good to sort of be back amongst uh, so many of you whose faces I recognize uh, um, and uh, people I've worked with uh, in the past. And it's good to see you. And uh, I hope that this is going to be a very productive day. We have an extremely uh, challenging assignment, uh, as, as I see it, to uh, use uh, these uh, uh, four hours uh, to increase our, um, uh, to, to not just focus on the state's 
uh, budget uh, tax and spending challenges, uh, but to add to our collective knowledge base uh, about the various components that go into uh, the crisis, the, the crises that, that we've experienced and the, the, the tremendous uh, crisis that we're experiencing um, uh, as, as we speak, uh, dealing with uh, the budget, uh, the lack of one, uh, the funding for human services in particular, but for essential state services in general. Um, and so we want to use this, and we rearranged the schedule just the last couple of weeks so that we could uh, 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 accumulate the, uh, the, the wisdom and the uh, expertise and the uh, 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 wise words that we're going to hear from these various perspectives in this really stellar panel uh, that Health and Medicine assembled for this uh, discussion today. Uh, and not just to leave with more notes uh, and some thoughts and some things that you might do on your own, but to try to leave us time at the end for uh, discussion from, from the various perspectives. Uh, the budget crisis that we're experiencing now, uh, the spending side, what are demands on spending, uh, the revenue side, what are the state's revenue options, uh, and then uh, uh, how can we learn from other states? And we have some experts here from uh, elsewhere in the country who can help, help us sort of see beyond our own uh, uh, constraints here in Illinois uh, and see what, uh, what options uh, that uh, sound good that we might be able to adapt. And then having uh, 45 minutes uh, uh, for discussion at the end with all the panelists uh, hopefully still able to stay uh, and, as, and all of you uh, where we can share your questions, your uh, uh, comments, and uh, hopefully use that as a stepping stone to build uh, a coalition to change the narrative, uh, as Jerry Sturmer would, would say, uh, so that we can uh, come out of here uh, empowered to uh, and know what direction we need to go uh, collectively to uh, get us out from under the morass that we're in. Uh, so let me not uh, take up more time to make sure that we have uh, that, that time at the end that uh, uh, I uh, promised and uh, begin with our uh, first panel. Uh, I'll be somewhat uh, rigid in my, uh, uh, in, in my uh, enforcement of the time constraints uh, so that we have time at the end of uh, each panel for a few questions and then making sure, as I said, that we'll have time uh, for uh, plenty of discussion uh, at the uh, uh, last hour uh, of this uh, forum today. Uh, so we'll begin with uh, uh, looking at the 800-pound gorilla in the room. It's hard to talk about any, think about having any discussion uh, about the state's uh, budget situation without recognizing uh, the um, uh, huge challenge, uh, crisis that we face uh, without one. Uh, and we have two speakers who will share their thoughts with us uh, examining the impact of the current budget impasse. Uh, with us today, uh, Amber Smock, who is uh, Director of Advocacy for Access Living, uh, the largest uh, nationally recognized center for independent living uh, in Chicago, and Amber does uh, advocacy and follows the legislative process very closely for Access Living, um, and she'll be followed by William McNary, uh, who's the co-director of Citizen Action Illinois uh, and a, a prominent member of the Responsible Budget Coalition. Uh, so let me uh, bring Amber up to the uh, podium, and she will start our discussion this morning. Amber? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Morning. Yeah? Okay. Um, so what I would like to do is just uh, use this opportunity that I have at the beginning of the day to sort of set up this picture, get the ball rolling, get people thinking about what's going on. Um, so I want to thank Health and Medicine for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I was very honored by that. Um, and as many of you know, my focus is on disability rights advocacy. And I represent an organization that not only does advocacy, but also provides services, some of which are being directly affected by the budget impasse right now. Um, I, in fact, I have a staff member here who is actually on a team um, for which the state owes $600,000. Um, when I think it's been... Uh, nearly a year since the administration first rolled out its first budget proposal, and that we seem nowhere close to a real budget resolution. As a disability advocate, I cannot help but feel insulted to the core. It is an insult that people believe that the Illinois human services system is fraught with rampant waste and abuse, 
when the reality is that reimbursements and rates are so low that the Illinois Human Services System is actually fought with fear and imminent self-destruction. It is an insult to be expected to provide services under contract with the state of Illinois for which we human services organizations are expected to pay out of our own pockets. It is an insult that the collective expertise and the lived experience of thousands of people who provide and need human services is considered irrelevant to structural reform of our state's finances. January, February, March, April, May, month by month, more and more agencies will shut down services and close their doors. The state needs someone to do the work that was done, but who will do it now? Agencies and freelancers can only go into debt for so long. There is now an increasing shrinkage of the human services system. Smaller providers are closing, and if they are not closing, they are looking at becoming part of larger providers. Providers that were able to accept referrals cannot accept referrals now. Jobs are being lost. Those who argue that such a reduction reflects streamlining need to remember that Illinois was never very rich in human services. We have fought hard to build what we have now, even though austerity has only grown stronger year by year. Only within the last two years have we seen a blossoming of what could be possible, especially for community-based disability services. The crisis is draining a grassland into a desert. It's not a jungle, it's a grassland. Ideally, we need a mosaic of services and providers of all kinds of services in our state from Cairo to Waukegan. We could do that if we had the revenue, if we had the wiggle room. I wanted to mention consent decrees, of which the state must honor several, including ones that Access Living helped file. The state has said on multiple occasions that they want to get out from under the consent decrees. The governor's office has offered the explanation that they would rather not have consent decrees and simply move forward with compliance plans for areas that need correction. However, true accountability is in short supply in the state. That's why we need the law and our legal advocates, especially when it comes to protecting the rights of people who are poor and or disabled. Being nice doesn't get you very far. As we say in the disability community, Smiling at stairs does not make a ramp. We in the disability community say that when it comes to policy making, there should be nothing about us without us. Because if you are not at the table, you are on the table. For example, the Dawn score fight, the overtime fight, those were decisions that were made without the input of people who actually knew what they were doing. Like the 40,000, I just want to point out that people who are on the table, are the 40,000 seniors who depend on Meals on Wheels, the 90,000 seniors who, who rely on state-funded home services, the 30,000 people with disabilities who rely on personal care home services, the 45,000 students with disabilities in the Chicago public schools who are waiting for funding from the state of Illinois to pay for their education that may never come, like the thousands who rely on mental health services and whose providers are saying we're not getting any money for psychiatry. Uh, like the thousands of families who need reliable early intervention services for their children with disabilities. You can't just say you're gonna get these services for three months and then we'll have to end them. Like the thousands of people with developmental disabilities whose group homes are at risk because the Medicaid reimbursement rates are so low. Like the thousands of people with physical disabilities who use wheelchairs and scooters and whose equipment providers are in danger of shutting down because again, the reimbursement rates are too low. We shouldn't have to live this close to the edge. People in the state deserve to dream of a better partnership with the state, a partnership where there is enough money to keep needed services money and there is enough money to innovate. Enough money so that there's dental care, enough money that there's a place to live, enough money so you don't have to go to jail, or die. Remember the burial expense thing? Right. right now, there's no room in the budget crisis for anyone's dreams, unless we make that happen today. And ultimately, we're facing not only a failure of appropriations, but also a failure of policy. 
Even as we move along without a budget, there is an effort to create policies that harm or undermine people. Policies that make it difficult for people to appeal human services agency decisions. Policies that remove supports from people who need home services. Policies that are not based on successful outcomes, but rather on budgetary wishes. We need to stop. Now I turn it over to Bill. William? Well, good morning. <laughs> My mom always told me you could tell what kind of a crowd you're standing in front of by the way they greet friends or by the way they greet strangers when they greet you. So let's try that again. Good morning. <laughs> now that's more like it. You all do my mama proud. There's a funding crisis here in the state of Illinois and uh, I challenge myself every time I do a forum like this is to see if I can find the evidence of a crisis in that morning's paper. I didn't have a chance to pick up today's paper, so I have yesterday's paper. And it was interesting because as I was going through it, usually the funding crisis evidence is usually in the upper pages, but I had to turn. I turned and kept turning. I said, well, maybe I'll lose the challenge today. But no, on page 26 in the Sun-Times yesterday, it's a letter that says, uh, release Illinois funding for college financial aid. As college has gotten more expensive every year, the demand for the monetary award program, the MAP program, Illinois' need-based financial aid has grown. In recent years, more students who qualified for MAP did not get it than did get it. The program runs out of money earlier and earlier every year. This year, no one who is qualified for MAP has gotten a penny. Twice in 2015, the General Assembly passed legislation to fund MAP in May. Uh, we added $24 million to the governor's, the House Bill 4146 added $24 million to the governor's original MAP request of $373 million, passed both chambers, but was vetoed by the governor. It's, uh, State Senator Pat McGuire, Democrat of Juliet, wrote that letter. And of course, uh, many of you already know that as Chicago State University students returned from the holiday break, to their south side campus, they face an uncertain future. A budget impasse between the General Assembly and the Illinois Republican Governor Bruce Rauner could force the state's only university that serves predominantly black students to either shutter its doors or cut staff and academic programming by mid-semester. That's when Chicago State University's research fund will run out. The university has been operating off reserves that now have dwindled down to $9 million, enough to operate the 7,000 student body university for for just two more months. After a year in office, Governor Rauner has uh, brought Illinois government to a standstill. The state's financial condition has gone from bad to worse under his watch, and as well as local municipalities that depend on states for assistance. And, and Governor Rauner refuses to discuss a budget solution until he gets his so-called turnaround agenda. Ironically, as we sit here in the uh, Field Core Boy Law Center, in the name of making Illinois more competitive. He wants to lower wages and have fewer rights for those working people who seek justice in the courtroom or justice in their workplaces. He wants to make it harder for workers who are injured on the job to, to get medical care and recover lost wages. He wants to reduce public services and cut local schools, universities, and state governments. Now, there's a lot of talk in Springfield about values, but we have a values-based document in Springfield and it's called a budget. It sets our state's priorities. For where your treasury is, there shall be your heart also. And when the government sets the wrong priorities, it's the people who pay the price. As of July 1st, the state has stopped funding vital public services. Providers have already been forced to cut off families from vital services and eliminate essential jobs. Some have closed their doors. Illinois children, families, and communities are being harmed right now. The autism program, as of July 1st, the autism program is not being funded for 1,800 families. Epilepsy grants are not being funded. After school programs have closed, early intervention therapists are not being paid. Seniors and those with disabilities who apply are not receiving needed independent living services. 
155,000 families will lose heating assistance because the low-income energy assistance program has not been funded. Good paying jobs at risk because construction of college, classroom buildings, mental health hospitals have been suspended. Public transit is no longer available in some downstate communities. Illinois has stopped funding college assistance for 120,000 students. The state has stopped funding grants for psychiatrists. Substance abuse programs have been shuttered, putting at risk 70,000 Illinoisans. Illinois has stopped funding for 75,000 survivors of domestic violence. Services for immigrants are not being funded. The state has stopped funding breast and cervical cancer screenings for thousands of women. Public health organizations have cut staff and services. Those with HIV and AIDS are no longer receive prescription assistance, and providers of homeless shelter services have been forced to lay off workers. But let me tell you one thing that the governor did not cut. He didn't cut over $100 million in tax breaks to corporations now. For your heart is, that's where your treasure shall be also. The late Senator Paul Wellstone said, politics is not about power. Politics is not about money. Politics is not about winning for winning's sake. Politics is about the improvement of people's lives. Citizen Action, along with Access Living and many others, will speak to you today as, and we are proud members of the Responsible Budget Coalition, a coalition of over 200 member organizations that have shared values and common goals. This is a diverse group of organizations that have come together to advance three principles, no more cuts to vital programs and services, adequate revenue to support state priorities to make smart investments and fairness in raising revenues. But I want to close by saying we've been engaged in this policy fight for over a year. And if this was just a public policy fight, we'd have won the battle by now. The reason I say that is because if you are up against these quotes here, here's a quote here. I'll read. We need a budget. There are other issues, they're important, some of them I think more important than others, but you don't hold the budget hostage to get those. It has been very destabilizing with state government. I think a lot of people have suffered. Former Governor Jim Edgar. Another quote, running the government is not like running a business. He comes from a, being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur where you buy a business, you tear it apart, and you sell it. I don't think you're gonna tear apart the state and sell it. He might want to, but you can't do that. Governor Jim Thompson, former governor. And so my friends, Governor Rounder comes from a corporate world, GTCR. And the R in GTCR stands for Rounder. He's made millions by buying up companies, squeezing the profit out of them, selling them, paying the lawyers, and then moving on. So all I'm saying to you is let's fight the policy fight, yes, but also let's get educated, pick a side, and fight the political battle as well. Because again, if this was just a normal policy fight, we'd have a budget by now. The only difference between, I've been down in Springfield for over 30 years, and the only difference between mixed legislators and Republican governors and, and mixed de and Democratic legislators, the only difference is every other administration with the exception of this one, has passed a budget in required amount of time. So again, I am excited today because we're gonna be engaging in both talking about public policy, good sound public policy that helps fund the way we, change the way we fund services here in the state of Illinois. We must do that. But let us also be prepared to fight the political fight as well. Thank you so much. Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Amber and uh, William, uh, for helping get this uh, off to a, a somber and uh, sad beginning. Uh, but that is the uh, uh, the state in which we live. So uh, this is uh, uh, a, uh, unfortunately the a, a necessary way to, to to start this discussion. We have time. We don't have time. But are there some a, a pressing question? But nothing got submitted uh, over this. Panel, if there are some questions, um, uh, urgent thing. Yes, Bar uh, Barbara. One quick thing. Are you seeing providers also suffer from 
very late payments. Um, my understanding is that some people are experiencing late payments and others are not. So ironically, despite the fact that, at least for access living, speaking just for access living, ironically, despite the fact that we are not getting money owed under contract, the money that is coming in is relatively on time compared to the past. So like, the interesting thing is that there is, are some views that the comptroller is doing her best to try to at least keep things going on time, but the problem is still cash flow. But that may be different for other organizations. People are definitely saying the money's just not coming in because they haven't appropriated anything. Um, maybe you have a different. No, I'm, we're saying the same thing. Uh, but since there are no questions, let me just close by, I, when I started off like I did, I, I heard it was somber. I, I am no less excited or optimistic about what needs to happen. I mean, we've been through tough times before and let us become students of history. The only way we're gonna change anything like this is number one, we gotta realize the battle that's before us and be ready to be engaged in it. And I'm ready and I'm excited about that. No, no hand wringing today, no woe is us, no gnashing of teeth. Again, let's just get ready to fight the battle that needs to be fought. Short term, we know what's needed. This is not hard, this is not rocket science. Short term, we need to fund state services there are three possible ways. There are a lot of options to choose revenue. Number one, you can go back and restore all or some of the tax cuts that got uh, reduced uh, back in January. The majority of them went to the richest of the rich, so here we are putting tax cuts to people, giving them to those who needed the least and taking away from those who needed the most. Restore the tax rates, too. We can modernize our sales tax code, three. We can begin to close corporate tax loopholes. Those are three ways of immediate money that can solve some of our immediate problems. But long term, we need a structural change. We need to change the way we fund taxes in this state. We're talking about a graduated income tax. We're in one of the few states in the country that collects income tax is not graduated. And the good news is that Leader Don Harmon is committed to calling and passing a bill out of the Senate that does that. And Kristen Mitchell has a similar bill in the House. So, uh, uh, William, let me just interrupt to say we're going to get to the long-term solutions if, we, if we can. Just we make sure we have time for all the different Very perspectives. Very good. But again, I just wanted to make sure that you understand that we are not in mourning here. We're just it, get clear-eyed, and we are bright-eyed, and we are have the whole armor on, and we're suited up and ready to do battle. Woo! Okay. Well, uh, uh, what, 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 that, one more that's quick my quarter. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> but I, I do want to say one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. And, okay, and I think this is very Carmen important. Marjorie. I see the hands are raised. But I, I want to caution people that it's important to motivate people to fight back. But uh, I think that service providers are being stretched very thin. So how, finding ways for people to engage in fighting back and making progress at the same time that they're experiencing having to lay off staff and turn away people who need help, I mean, that's a lot to ask of people. So I just caution people that you have to find a way to make this doable for everybody to get in that fight. So Okay, be, and before you mind, Ca yeah. Carmen, uh, just a quick uh, uh, addition to that uh, question. Well, uh, our providers uh, have to an example that really and the undocumented. Uh, when you receive a payment of six hundred dollars in a month, we are being impacted. Providers are being impacted. Very, very much so. All right, well let me uh, bring this uh, panel to a close.